and I think you're going to be in uh, for a real treat and a real blessing. So, young people, y'all better sing loud, sing proud, don't scream it, uh, but sing loud, and, uh, and let's, uh, let's honor the Lord tonight, all right? So, y'all gather in the choir. A lot of work for our Bible school and puts in a lot of time.
Now, if I can just keep all this bunch around, I can have, I, we can get a good youth choir around here, praise God. They can already sing. They sound wonderful. And uh, I'm telling you, they show back up. And they show back. They keep showing up around here and singing like that. Some of these, some of these older folk are going to get happy and start shouting around here for too long. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, I've asked the girls to sing. I appreciate them, and I appreciate we got some young folk in our church and some teenagers that truly do love the Lord and uh, living a good life and living a pure life. And uh, how many is thankful tonight that the devil don't have them all, praise God, and they still some around that love Jesus. And I want these younger ones to know uh, that, that even as you get older and you're in high school and middle school, and uh, listen, uh, you don't have to go the way of the world. You can serve Jesus and and uh, you can still you can still live right and honor God, and uh, and I appreciate that uh, you ought to be thankful. I'm thankful that you got some examples around here to follow after. So you listen as a girl sing tonight. While walking down a memory lane, not so long ago, old Satan came right by my side, making me alone. And he brought up thoughts of hurt and pain When I had gone astray He wanted to discourage me As I walked along my way It's been 
sure I'm thankful for the blood tonight. And, uh, I appreciate the good singing. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate all our young people and the work they put in this week. And, and uh, I, just like, I just like seeing some young people get together and put a little effort into anything pretty much anymore. Seems like we're living in a generation nowadays, you've got these, all these young people don't want to do nothing, you know, just lay around all day. But uh, I, I appreciate these that showed up every night and they've worked hard and they've paid attention and listened and and as uh, far as I know, we didn't have to give nobody a whooping around here this week. So that's a, amen for that. That's a blessing, praise God. We still believe in paddling around here, praise God. <laughs> we used to get it. I used to get one about every day, whether I needed one or not. My dad said, I'm going to give you one because if you don't need it right now, you're going to after a while. So we just get it out of the way. No, I'm just kidding. But we do believe. I do believe in whooping my kids around here, praise God. <laughs> but anyways, I appreciate, I appreciate the, these young people and, and just their... Uh, just them being here, and, and, and uh, I just I'm praying God will do a special, special work in their heart and in their life. And and uh, everybody talking about we got pizza waiting on us after service, so they're hurry, they're they're praying right now that the preacher hurry up and shut up so we can go eat some pizza. All right, so I promise I'm gonna preach real quick tonight. All right. Uh, but uh, I, w I, w I want you to take your Bibles if you've got uh, a copy tonight. I want you to go to the book of Matthew, chapter number four. Matthew, chapter number four. And when you uh, find your place and you're willing and enable, I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. You've been sitting for a little bit. Let's go ahead and stand our feet. And we're going to honor the Word of God. And uh, we honor it by, uh, by standing. And I understand not everybody can. That's okay. Uh, if you can't, you can honor it in your heart. And uh, but. I'm, I'm thankful for the Bible. If there's one thing you ought, to, uh, you ought to recognize, and one thing I pray that you understand, is that there's a, uh, there's, there's a sacredness to this book. It's more than just a book. It's not a book that's on a shelf somewhere. This book's like, unlike any other book that they ever has been, ever will be. And uh, I, I appreciate those songs that they sung. How many know tonight that a song, a song can sure help you uh, in the days ahead? Amen. And uh, I'm praying that you'll, you'll, you'll uh, maybe later on down the road, you may find yourself in a hard time and a hard place, a difficult place. Uh, I'm praying you still remember the words that Jesus does love you. And uh, this book, it's a special book. And no matter what you're going through, he knows where you're at. And so uh, I'm, I pray it'll stick with you. Matthew chapter number 4, verse number 18. Matthew chapter number 4 and verse number 18. Sure do love my Bible tonight. Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 18, the Bible says, And Jesus, how many know that the Bible is about Jesus? And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Then he saith unto them, Follow me. Watch this now, and I will make you fishers of men. And they, talking about the two brothers that Jesus are talking to, and they straightway left their nets and followed him. Young people, I want to say something to you tonight. The greatest thing you could ever do with your life is to follow him. The world is going to preach a message that you need to follow your dreams. But the greatest one you could ever follow is not your dreams, and it's not even your own heart. People say, well, you know, follow what's in your heart. Well, the Bible says that your heart at the core is wicked, desperately wicked. Better be careful about following your heart. Get you in a wicked place. Get you in trouble. But if you choose to follow Jesus, Jesus will never lead you wrong. And the Bible says that they left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And watch verse 22. And they immediately left the ship and their father 
and followed him. I want to talk to you, preach to you tonight just for a few moments about following the Lord. Again, the greatest decision you'll ever make is the, is the decision to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for the word of God tonight. Lord, I pray uh, that you'd do what only thou can do right now. Lord, I pray that you'd speak in a special way. I pray you'd take this unworthy vessel, use it for thy glory. Lord, help me uh, to say what I ought to say tonight, what you'd have me to say and uh, Lord, I pray there'd be some young people in here tonight, Lord, that they'd, uh, they'd get a hold of the, uh, of the message tonight. Lord, they would hear what the Spirit would have to say. And I pray if there's some here tonight, whether they be young, old, it does not matter. If there's anybody here tonight uh, that is not saved, Lord, they're not, they're not, they're, 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 they're not ready uh, to step into eternity. They're not ready to die. I pray tonight would be the night that they would come and they would place their faith in you and be forever changed. For that one uh, that may be among you, they may be here, but they're not following you. Lord, I pray to make the decision tonight to follow thee. We love you. We praise you. Thank you uh, for what you've done this week. Thank you for what you're going to do in the days ahead. And we'll not fail to give you all the praise, glory, and the honor for it all. For it's in Christ's high and holy name. We do humbly pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for standing. You can be seated this evening. Here in Matthew chapter number four, we are. This is the uh, what is known as the Gospels, the beginning of the New Testament. And in chapter number four, here in our text tonight, we are looking in on the very beginning in that of the Lord's ministry. Now, many may not know. Many some may know in here tonight that the Lord Jesus, uh, he was a hundred percent God yet he was a hundred percent man all at the same time you say preacher how do you believe how, how can you explain that I really can't I just by faith believe it I understand it I remember I struggled with that for a while uh, but you understand that uh, the Lord Jesus was God wrapped up in flesh he came to this earth we understand he would live 33 and a third years and uh, although we don't have the record of everything uh, the Bible says that if it was recorded everything that he did the books of this world could not even contain all that, was, that, he, that he did a while upon this earth but uh, the last three and a half years of the Lord's earthly uh, life is what is known as his earthly ministry and so here in chapter number four of the book of Matthew it is the beginning if you will in that of the Lord's ministry throughout our Lord's ministry we see that Jesus would perform many great miracles he would do many wonderful things things that we're still talking about today I'm talking about things about uh, healing blinded eyes I mean causing blind people to see again and, and deaf people to hear again lame people to walk and we see where he would heal sick and he would he would he was he was he was so wonderful uh, he was so mighty that he even called the dead to rise up and to live again. That is the God we serve. If you don't hear nothing else I'm telling you tonight, you better recognize that this God of the Bible, uh, the God you've been, we've been singing about, and the God that the, the teachers have been teaching about this week, he ain't, just some, he ain't just some character in a story somewhere. He's not just a picture on the wall. He's not some kind of statue, genie in a bottle, but he is God Almighty. Amen. I'm talking about he's the one who in the beginning, I mean, spoke it and there it was. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful God and he's in control. That is God. He created everything. Young people, listen to me. You didn't float up on a seashore one day as some kind of organism and, you know, all of a sudden sprouted limbs and, and arms and legs and started swinging from vines. Hey, uh, you see it. We got decorated in here, but that ain't you, friend, all right? That's a monkey, all right? You're a human being. You uniquely uh, made your divine finally made by a holy God. Amen. But God created everything that is our God. And so God, we understand, because of sin and man's sin, God would come to this earth and he would make the ultimate sacrifice. And while here upon this earth, the last three and a half years of his life is what is known as the Lord's earthly ministry. This is the beginning of his earthly ministry. And here in verse number 18 of chapter number 4, the Bible says that 
as he would begin his earthly ministry, if you were to back up, uh, right before this, you'll see where he is tempted by the devil. And by the way, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see here in the text that when he was tempted by the devil, his response was not his thoughts. It wasn't uh, man's ideas, philosophies, but he always responded with the word of God. If you want to understand and learn how to face temptation and deal with temptation, that's why it's so important you read your Bible. Know what the Word of God is. He, would, he, he, he always responded with the Word of God. And so uh, he, he's tempted by the devil. And then he enters into where he begins to call his disciples. Peter uh, is mentioned first here, he and his brother Andrew. And the Bible says that they were casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And Jesus approaches them and he saith unto them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And the Bible says they straightway left their nets and followed him. We understand that Jesus would call these disciples. I know it was asked uh, throughout, this, uh, throughout this week, uh, how many how many disciples? Do you know how many disciples that Jesus had? Some of you younger ones? That's a look right there. Praise the Lord. All right, you get an extra piece of pizza tonight, all right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He got it right, 12. And he would call these men, and these men were going to get to see and experience things that not everybody else got to. What a blessing that must have been to be the one that Jesus would call. And so Peter and James, uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John are the ones here in the text that are mentioned to where the Lord would call. Number one, I want you to notice the invitation. Here was the invitation. Jesus invited them to follow him. What was the invitation? His first two words, notice what he said. He said, follow me. Don't follow your heart. Don't follow your dreams. Don't follow your job. Don't follow this, that, and another, but follow me. I say this tonight, the Lord's invitation is for you to follow him. For you to follow him. You know what I love about this where it says when Jesus walked up to him and said, follow me. You know what, you know, you know what excites me when I read this text? It, it excites me to know that God wanted these men. God wanted them. How many of you know that, that nobody ever sends out an invitation to somebody they don't want to be around? Huh? I mean, I mean, I mean, y'all, y'all know what it's like. You get, you get your birthday party together and everything, and then mom and daddy comes in there and says, "All right, who all you want to invite?" Well, you don't invite people that you don't want to be around, right? You want to invite your buddies. The only reason you invite somebody you don't want to be around is because your mom and daddy makes you. Somebody say, "Amen," right there. They say, "Well, they're family." Well, you asked me who I wanted. Here's what I want you to know tonight: Jesus wants you. You know how I know he wants you? Because he's sending an invitation. Follow me. Just as much as Jesus wanted these men to follow him, he wants you to follow him. He wants you to follow after him. I like this. This was interesting to me. It says that Peter and Andrew, they were casting their nets. They're fishermen. That's what fishermen do. And then the Bible says that James... James and John, they were mending their nets. Now, casting their nets and mending their nets, that's two different things. Watch this. They're, uh, these, 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 uh, these men are in two different stages of life. They're involved in two different things. One's casting, some's casting, some's mending. But regardless of where they're at, it's not important as to what they are doing. What's important is that Jesus invites them. And some of y'all, uh, some of you are, are at a very young age. Some of you are maybe a little bit older. And some of you may be at different stages. We could go through, you know, talk about all that going on in your life right now. And, and, and there'll be different things in different stages. But here's what's important. Yeah, Jesus still sends the invitation no matter what stage you're in. He invites them. And he's inviting you tonight. You read this book and you're going to hear where Jesus is saying, come, over and over and over, come, come. And so he says, follow me. The invitation, I see number two, the response. Here's what I love about what these men do. The Bible says that Jesus gives them the invitation, follow me. And the Bible says they straightway left their nets and followed him. You know what the right 
response to the invitation of God is, is to follow him to serve him, to to follow after him. I mean, can you imagine the scene of this taking place? I mean, you imagine these boys, I mean, they're out there fishing, and all of a sudden, here comes the Lord walking by, the Lord Jesus, and he walks up to them. I mean, they're in the middle of fishing, they're in the middle of mending their nets, and everything I've read about these fishermen back in those days is nobody likes to mend the nets because when you was mending the net, you wasn't catching no fish. You was casting, you was, you know, that's how you caught the fish. And so they're, they're doing the work that, that they know to do. And all of a sudden, here comes the Lord Jesus. He walks up and he says, follow me. And I'll make you fishers of men. Can you, can you imagine what it must have went through their mind? Well, we're fishing right now. I mean, they could have had all kinds of excuses. But what I like is that they, the Bible says they straightway left their nets and they followed him. You know what that tells me? It tells me this, that these men, even, even they understood there's something different about this man. There's something unique about this man named Jesus. There's, there's something special about him that, uh, that I, I, I want to find out more about him. I want to know him more. And so he wants us to follow him. Let's follow him. Let's, let's go. They laid their nets down and they went. Can I say this to you tonight, young person? There's still something special about the Lord. Amen. I mean, he is special. He's supernatural. I mean, ain't nobody like Jesus. You ain't never going to meet nobody like Jesus. And uh, Dr. Larry Brell said, ain't nobody like him. And, and sure enough, there ain't for him. I mean, he's a one of a kind. Uh, and, and if there's anybody worth following, it would be him. And when he sends the invitation your way, the best response you could do is drop everything you are doing and follow him. Follow him. I will say this, this was a personal choice. The Bible said James and John, they were out there with daddy fishing, but daddy couldn't choose for them. They had to choose their own self. Can I tell you, young person, there's going to come a day where mom and daddy can't make the choice for you. Some of you may be in church tonight because mom and daddy chose for you to be here. You ought to thank God for that, that you've got a mom and daddy loves you enough to bring you to the house of God and to teach you the truth. But there's going to come a day where you're going to have to make the decision your own self. Some of you teenagers, y'all are growing up right now and, 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 and you're going to have to learn that you can't just do it because mom and daddy says to do it, but you're going to have to do it because you have chose to follow him. It is a personal choice. They immediately left their nets and followed them. Lastly, I give you this and I'm done. I want you to see their experience. Their experience. You say, what you talking about? Their experience. Well, you read throughout the Gospels and you'll find the disciples as they followed the Lord, they got to see things that not everybody else got to see. They got to do things that not everybody else got to do. They got to hear things that not everybody else got to hear. I'm talking about they were, they were walking with the Lord himself. Uh, they got to experience all the wonder. I mean, could you imagine? Just, just could you imagine hearing the Lord talk? What's the verse we, uh, your, your memory verse, he says, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Could you imagine hearing truth speak truth? Never a man spake like this man. And so they got to experience a lot, but hear me now. I want to throw this out, a thought out there to you. I don't want you to get a hold of it. What if the day when he sent the invitation their way and said, follow me, what if they said, no. We don't want to go. We want to keep on fishing. You know what would have happened in their life? They would have never got to experience what they experienced with the Lord. They would have never got it. And I'm preaching to some young people tonight, and I want you to get a hold of this. I believe that God has got a special work plan for every young person in here tonight. But as he's sending the invitation to you, if you reject it, you're going to miss out on the goodness of God that he's got in store for your life. There's a lot of young people who have set exactly where you're sitting tonight. And there was a man of God got up, opened the word of God, and said, Jesus wants to do something with your life. Jesus has got something special in store for you if you'll just follow him, choose him. And they didn't. And they missed out on it. I don't want to miss out on what the Lord does. Watch this. I don't want to miss out on what God's going to do in your life. I mean, the next great 
evangelist could be sitting in here tonight. We don't even know it. And the invitation's going out and he's saying, follow me, follow me. God could do a great work and, and will do a great work. Here's what, uh, I, I'll give you this other thought. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hush, but I'll give you this other thought tonight. Is that, how, why, why is it that somebody follows anybody? Right? I mean, why would you follow anybody? You want to go somewhere, correct? If I, if I said tonight, all right, follow me to the fellowship hall. We're going to eat some pizza. Why would you follow me? Because you want to get to the fellowship hall where the pizza's at, right? That's why you follow somebody. But how many of you know tonight, I love what the Lord says. He says, follow me. And I'm glad for the child of God. If you're here tonight and you're saved, I'm glad we're going somewhere. We are going somewhere. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful to be going somewhere tonight. But I'm also thankful that I'm not just going somewhere, but I'm becoming something. Watch this now. He says, follow me, and I'll not just lead you somewhere, but he says, I will make you. Can I say this to you, young person? Following God ain't just going to lead you somewhere. Following the Lord is going to allow the Lord to make something great out of you. That's the way it works. You just, you just give your life to the Lord and say, okay, God, I'm not much, but here I am. I'm gonna, here's my life. I'll follow you. And then God says, I'll make something in your life. He says, I'll make you fishers of men. And here we are all these years later still talking about these men who was just on the side of a seashore throwing some nets, tending to their nets. And Jesus walked by and said, follow me. And they said, okay and left their nets and they followed him. Here's what I want you to know. There's no telling what God will do with your life if you'll just follow him. Just follow him. Just, just, just go after him. Just choose Jesus. And Jesus is going to do something special and make something special out of you and your life. That's going to bring him glory and honor for everybody to talk about. Following him. He's the only one worth following tonight. If you're going to follow anything, hey, listen, I'm not against ball. We play ball. We do all that stuff. But if you're more, you're more interested in following a ball game than you are Jesus, something ain't right. Or the ball's going to let you down one of these days, but Jesus never will. Jesus never will. You follow Jesus. You follow Jesus. Father, I thank you for the word of God tonight. Lord, I, I pray for these young people. And I pray, God, that you would do something special in their life. I pray right now, Lord, no matter, I don't know where each, each one of them is. I don't know what they're dealing with, don't know what they're facing, but God, I know that for some right now, the invitation is being given. As they sit where they sit tonight, I know they recognize that they sense the invitation. Some, it may be in the days ahead, but nonetheless, the invitation is coming their way. And I pray they'd choose you. And I pray they'd follow after you. That there'd be an interest in you and thy word. Lord, for those that may be among us tonight that is not saved. Maybe they're here and maybe they don't understand everything. Don't really know much about the Bible and church and, and the Lord Jesus. But what they do know is that something's not right in their heart. They do know that they're not ready to step off into eternity. I pray they'd come tonight and allow somebody to take a Bible, show them what the Word of God says concerning salvation. Lord, I thank you for this church, and I thank you for these young people. Pray a special blessing upon them in the days ahead. And we're not fair to give you the praise, glory, and the honor for it all, for it's in Christ's high and holy name we do humbly pray.